Hey guys, welcome back to Furnace Clans. I wanted to show you a overly elaborate trap that I constructed to help me remove my flaming zombie dogs. Now, you'll notice that I've got a bunch of waving bridges up here. These are attached to this uh, pressure plate, which is perfectly timed. Again, this is the same construction I did earlier for the silk trap bridges, um, but this is specifically built for bridge waving. And what it's going to do, it's going to lift up and drop down these bridges here. Now you'll notice I have a series of doors. This was so my miner can escape. And if we take a look at my traffic settings, I've restricted all access for the main run and I've hide, uh, excuse me, high pathed the escape route. Now hopefully these doors will stop the zombie dogs from getting into the uh, main area. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna set up a dig. We're going to tell them to mine that out, which should eventually have these dogs come cruising up. I'm going to make sure that's part of my burrow. It is. Okay. And to make sure I don't have any problems, we're going to forbid everything down here. I don't want somebody trying to run in and grab anything that fell apart when I blew things apart earlier. Some of my enemy undead are passing into the OMG. We're down to 43 overall out there, bunch of forgotten beasts, couple of flesh balls, but in general we've cleaned out a good amount of the undead. I'm hoping with this manipulation we'll clean out these dogs and we'll get the rest of these guys to path in. So, while we wait for my miner, uh, there was a request to go over some of my dwarves. So in self-defense we're only going to go over some of our notable and named dwarves. Edge Figaro is our legendary five miner and mason. He's got one kill. Her husband is dead and 12 kids. Arkvasti is our legendary carpenter and miner. No kills, no marriage. Woob is our legendary miller, weaver, and clothes maker. Eight random zombie kills, not married. Aristi in the second is in the middle of becoming a glass maker, has tons of siblings, child of Venezer and stupid elves. ITG is our duchess. She loves bolts is our legendary furnace, weaponsmith, armorsmith, weaver. It's four notable goblin kills and 11 uh, generics. Her husband's dead, gave birth to half of the second generation of the fort. Juxtapose is a legendary farmer and mason, unmarried, with 11 generic zombie kills. Fishy Bang, you're a legendary farmer, thresher, and bone carver. You're a child of ITG, you're unmarried, you got one notable goblin kill and five generic zombie kills. Anizer is a legendary farmer and gem cutter. Married to Stupid Elves, crap loads of kill, uh, kids, but no kills. Stupid Elves, you're a legendary stone crafter, furnace operator, and farmer. You're training up in metalworking, and you got two generic zombie kills. Anjakon, who is our bookkeeper and manager, is also a legendary farmer and our main brewer. As unmarried, seven generic zombie kills. So that's what the doors look like. Now we're going to lock this door, make sure that nobody goes through it. And unfortunately, we're going to have to take this door out. So we're going to remove that building. And that's because the dogs won't see a path if they can't get through the door. But it didn't look like they immediately responded, so hopefully, eventually, they'll come cruising up and get themselves splattered. Here's hoping. Hey guys, apparently when I had to do my reinstall, something ate a couple of clips I had created or something or other. But either way, I lost a bit of information on trying to deal with the dogs. As I just mentioned, I had created the giant waving bridge structure, which is down here. Uh, but the dogs weren't moving. They stayed on fire and would not pass. So one of the things I decided to do was get them floody, blah, get them flooded out, and get them to move along. Bec once I did that, but we might as well just go show you what I did there. So what I did was, I built another aquifer tap up here, which goes down the same hole that I was dropping the magma down. We flooded this area out to a decent height, and got the dogs all wet. Much steam and things of that nature later, and now the dogs are loose. Unfortunately, they're still not pathing. Even though it's only 1-0 water, I had hoped it was because it was 2-3 two, two, uh, two, water for a little bit, but 1-0 water even then, they're still not passing through. So hopefully we'll be able to get them to move along soon enough. Also of note, along the way we lost a child. 
up here on our ice wall, one of the children had strayed too close to the edge uh, during a human invasion and got shot full of arrows and ended up getting killed. Because of that, we have a minor happiness situation going on where a lot of the siblings and family members of said child are somewhat cranky. None of them are in the danger zone yet, but it could be the start of a spiral if I lose a few more at the same time. We'll see how things go. Now here's something annoying, and part of the reasons I didn't actually want to try and flood down here originally, but it didn't give me much of a choice with them not pathing due to fire, was we're getting trees growing in this, which means to actually let them out, at some point I'd actually have to come down and cut this tree down if I let it occur. Now, I could try and get somebody in there to floor it, but I'm afraid these dogs will chase them down and try and do something horrible to them. So, we're going to... Well, spring just arrived. And what we're hoping to do is the military should come down for live fire training next, this next month. I've got them set on schedule. So, I found up above on surface, playing with the um, ice wall and the covering that if an undead doesn't want to move, once you start shooting bolts at it and it gets re-engaged, it'll start moving again and I've gotten some things to path into the grinder that way, which is helpful. So I'm hoping that's going to happen here as well. In other news, we've just about finished our east side walling, or at least stage one. We've got two slots left. Once these are closed off, I'll seal this area off. We've begun building bridges as overheads. The left side is pretty much complete. Once that's sealed off, I'll fill in this little corner and we'll come down here and we'll see what happens when we blow this up. And in the meanwhile, this is working nicely. We're in middle of autumn and we're not having much, if any, ice being dropped. So this technique will work. Now, one thing to notice is I have plenty of space for buckets still down here. But my buckets that are full with ice that were left behind are still filled with ice. What I'll probably have to do is set these for a special dump zone indoors somewhere so that the water will melt out. Or so the ice will melt back into water so I can do something with it. And on the 1st of Timber in 799, late autumn, we have completed walling off one third of the map. The southern half now belongs to Furnace Clans. No more invaders down there. Now we'll have to start working on the rest of the map, but we will get there. Meanwhile, we're going to build off our roof and get ourselves situated down here now that we've got a bit of surface to play in and get control of that and make it make sense. So now, out of raw curiosity, now that we've sealed off our southern half, I want to see what happens with this ice wall on top of the roads and bridges. This has me curious. So we're gonna break down the walls. There we go, our walls are down. Nothing spooked anybody. Let's start with the easy one. Let's rem Oops. Okay, so we're gonna have to reclaim this stuff. Let's try that again. Now. We're going to remove that building and see what happens. So as he's taking it apart, I can already see some of the ice wall there. He's still removing it, though. Almost taking the road apart. So it looks like they just overlapped, and the first thing built was what showed when I created these ice walls. Okay, that could be a little odd. I'm not sure I like that result. And don't get me wrong, it's nice that I'm able to build these ice walls on top of existing roadways and bridges. I'm just concerned that you would not be able to see them when you need to. Such as, you know, water falls across your road on the surface and you are no longer able to uh, get access from traders or something like that and you literally cannot see why without caying through the entire area. Okay, so we know the road's good. Let's remove these bridges. So with our bridge being broken down, as we can see here on the left, the ice wall is good there as well. So you, we are able to place ice walls on top of existing items and it is just simply overlapping. Well, this is good to know for the future. 
So similar to the live fire pit, I had some off and on recordings of the ice wall and other things uh, get lost in the move between the two systems. One of which was apparently my settings for temperature and stuff like that didn't hold. So I had to fight with it a bit to get uh, ice drops to, excuse me, ice walls to build again. As you can see, we've expanded this a little bit. We've completed the walls up here. I started expanding the walls going north because I wanted to start filling in some areas. And then a massive uh, human invasion showed up, which had me setting everybody inside so I didn't lose anybody else. And they're still kick mostly kicking around. Um, at this point, I think, though, they're all turned into undead. They are. However, the reason that they're all still sitting on the surface and haven't done anything is because we're in the middle of cleaning out the OMG. Uh, these are tons of bags. We finally cleared out the majority of this stuff, but we're also building uh, two lines of spike traps, and they're all going to be hooked up to this pressure plate. Because the pressure plate can only take uh, one job at a time to hook up these spikes, it's going to take a while. I have a feeling the OMG is going to be down for a year or longer. So we're not going to be working on the surface for a bit because there's just going to be too much stuff up there to deal with. But once I get more idlers and things like that, I may reopen it back up and just let them use the undead on the surface as target practice. We'll see how that goes. Also, uh, up here, I started to outline where I'm going to do my plug drop uh, using the cave-in method. If we come down here, this is where I'm going to be building the bathtub. I will walk you through. I'm going to use a gravity feed instead of using a uh, double pump system just because I've been having some my FPS is starting to drop it's getting low and the less random machinery I have at this point the better at least until I can get equipment cleaned up or um, all the random stuff that's all over the place and pathers and undead and things like that so that's what we're doing here in furnace clans uh, once we get this turned back on, we'll clear this out, etc., etc. Uh, one of the other things I want to do is come up here, and if we go down to... I've got three undead in this little pocket. Right now they're sealed in because I built this little wall lane over them. I do want to clear them out just to clean up my U-list for what I'm fighting with. And just to uh, get them out of there. So the only other thing to discuss before I leave you with this episode of Furnace Clans is I was able to clean out the dogs from the live fire pit. Uh, three of them we burned down with some magma and then we cooled them off, etc, etc. Two of them eventually floated up into here and got chewed up right up along this first run of the bridges. This was so much overkill it's not even funny. But it functioned and we were good. So at this point we're just filling in a little bit of flooring here. Uh, I will wall it back up. I'm going to put a bridge here so I can just slam it down and down and up on top of everybody's heads so that I can clear it in between when I'm not trying to use it. So other than that, uh, sorry this episode of Furnace Clans got delayed so bad. The whole reinstall everything I own into another drive system kind of slowed me up. But hopefully we should be able to get this cruising a little faster. I've been watching the posts on 40.05 now. And it looks like they're getting a decent amount of the bugs cleared up, but it's still hurting for FPS and playability and things like that. So as the bugs clean up, I'll start uh, worrying about a transition, but we're getting there. Uh, for those curious, we are at 83 citizens. We've lost, apparently lost them. Um, so eventually we'll get there. But as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.